Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to another Complete Army video. Uh, this time it is for the Space Wolves, and it's going to be 9th edition, 2,000 points uh, is the size of the army. That's the new points values now uh, for Space Wolves. So if you've been following the Space Wolves in the league uh, here for Season 8, they've been doing uh, very well. It's come as a bit of a surprise. So really, the list has been working okay, and I've been sort of thinking about the list whether to try and transition it over to 9th edition. And I think the way 9th edition plays, which is... Uh, it's very much. See, I'm trying. To, I'm kind of thinking it's like uh, a force in the middle, and then two flanking forces you're going to need because it's a lot of objectives that are often spread out now in Ninth Edition. It's all about taking objectives, holding objectives. Uh, firepower is great, but melee is a big thing now in Ninth Edition. And really, I, I think the listen you'll see it here. We'll, we'll uh, bring the units in and take a look at the different units and gradually build the army up. Uh, but I think this list. Uh, is well suited to 9th edition. But we'll see, you'll see how well the Space Wolves do uh, in the different games coming up, but uh, I hope their run in the season continues and they're able to do well. But uh, it's different times now, 9th edition's come along and there is some adaption that is needed. So, I had one thing I announced from the start here, this is a pure classic Space Marine army. Uh, here for the Space Wolves. They have such a nice variety of classic marine units, ones that are very unique to the Space Wolves, um, so like Murderfang and uh, the Wolfen and Blood Claws and so on, units that only the Space Wolves have. Uh, Thunderwolf Cavalry, another famous unit as well. So I think it's nice just to uh, stay faithful to uh, the classic Space Marines uh, for some of my lists. And it just, I think Primaris at this stage just wouldn't quite fit in. Uh, they'd sort of be the odd ones out in amongst the army, so instead I'm just going to go, for now, at least go for uh, pure classic Space Marines uh, for this Space Wolves list. So really, uh, that's the 9th edition rulebook, that's the codex which is still viable here for 9th edition, and then also uh, I'll be talking a little about uh, Saga of the Beast as well, some of the stratagems in there. This video, I'm going to build up the list, we're going to talk about all the tactics, why I've chosen each unit, what they're designed to do during the game, we're going to talk about the overall army structure and uh, the whole theme of the army, and it's from a you know, narrative point of view, hobby point of view, and then also you know, the strategy as well for trying to actually win games with the Space Wolves as well. So we'll come to the units in just a moment, I'm going to start introducing them here, but the, the theme of the Space Wolves army uh, is very much like a pack of wolves that hunt and they're all going in different directions but they're circling the prey and they close in for the kill uh, towards the end and it's you know it takes a, a well planned well timed attack just like a wolf pack can't go in one at a time and then get picked off they've got to coordinate themselves as a team and then strike together it's a nice theme going on with, with the way wolves work and then trying to reflect that with the space wolves um, so it is mostly uh, close combat this army, really that's been the theme and it's proved to be their strength if they're able to organize a decent attack and now I think with Ninth Edition with the board because we are playing on the smaller table so five by four that's going to suit this army uh, really well and just with the way that Overwatch and things have been cut down as well so I think Ninth Edition has helped the Space Wolves list it's not as big as it was I've had to cut uh, do some trimming around the edges because of the points increases so a little bit smaller than what it was in Ninth Edition uh, but pretty much it's as it was uh, from 8th edition so uh, we'll build this up here all the new points values all the new units some have been dropped some uh, have been shrunk in size uh, some have been added back in so but I think this list is pretty much straightened down ready for war so I'm just sort of conceding the fact I'm not going to win in a, in a firefight or a gun line battle with the space wolves and that's not their theme right? it should be 
and I think it's going to be a case of well, we'll bypass firepower, a little bit of supporting firepower, but we'll put the emphasis on close combat and try and excel at that uh, during the game. And again, aggressiveness as well for Night Edition, you drive your opponent back, drive them away from the objectives, the central objectives and so on, that plays well into uh, good strategy for Night Edition as well, where you're able to control more of the board than the opponent because you're pushing them back. So. As that, I think, is a strength for the space swords as well. If you look at their artwork, here they are fighting against the demons, and it's not a gun line of space swords that are in amongst them. And that's the kind of theme I want to go for with them. Uh, another big theme for space swords is characters. And you'll see it in the HQ choices, there's so many characters that you can pick from uh, for space swords. So I've reflected that in this list as well. I've got five HQ choices and a character elite as well. So loads of heroes, it all matches in with uh, this sort of Scandinavian Viking saga and different hit warrior born heroes and so on. Uh, the nice theme for Space Wolves, so I've, I've tried to reflect that in this list as well. So I'll go through them in the order that they come up in the book. I have left out some HQs. Yeah, so uh, Space Marines got an update, so things to bear in mind, shock assault, um, so on the charge, or if you are charged, or it's heroic intervention, you get plus one attack, really going to suit a melee based army. Um, combat doctrines, so devastator doctrine, not too much of a help. Uh, then tactical doctrine, yeah I've got a fair few bolters and so on, storm bolters in the list, and then I'm trying to get to assault doctrine, just to get that extra AP minus one. And close combat, just sort of laying the groundwork here. And something else that can easily be missed. Shock assault, yeah, it's not here. There's bolter discipline as well, which helps out a few of my units. But this one uh, here. So hunters unleashed. Any turn in which this unit with this ability made a charge move was charged to perform heroic intervention. It's plus one to hit rolls. So very helpful things like fun damage. It's minus one then plus one that cancels that out. So that's really helpful. Uh, characters also get a six inch heroic intervention. Again my army's got lots of characters in it so I'm sort of sticking to the, the theme of space wars of that. And this extra rule here as well. Savage Fury whilst the assault doctrine is active. So a lot of my half my army's on foot. So a couple of turns to get into position and then hopefully start striking in the, uh, when the assault doctrine is active, which is turn three. So Savage Fury, whilst the Assault Doctrine is active, an unmodified hit roll of a six is made for an attack made of a melee weapon by a unit of this ability. That attack scores an additional hit. So it's auto, popping auto hits on sixes. Another big incentive to go for close combat. So, you know, why why try and copy like an Ultramarine's gunline style army and then just paint them Space Wolves grey? I couldn't see any point in doing that. So if you're looking to collect Space Wolves, I would encourage you to try and get the Space Wolves unique units. It's much more rewarding, much more enjoyable, and it has a, a real good Space Wolves feel to it. If you go for loads of Prezes and Rhinos and your sort of standard Space Marine equipment, it just doesn't really reflect uh, as much what the Space Wolves are all about. So I've tried to uh, zone in on uh, their unique units, and they have loads of unique units to choose from, some amazing models, for sure. So uh, the structure of the army then, uh, you get 12 command points now uh, for a 2,000 point size army. Then uh, I've taken a battalion detachment and the warlord is part of that battalion. So it costs 3 points, you get 3 points back. Uh, so still at 12 command points. Then to get in those extra HQs, I've gone for a patrol. So that costs me 2 command points, it's not too bad. So I dropped to 10. Then I've taken an extra relic, extra warlord trait as well, so drop to 8, and then Bjorn the Fell Handed is in the list, so you get a bonus command point for him. So 9 command points, and really it's 9 plus 5, because you, you're guaranteed to get 5 more uh, during the game. Uh, as you start your command phase, you get a bonus command point, so really it's 14 command points, that's very very healthy, so I'm very very happy uh, with that number. And then, I'll mention it now, I keep forgetting to use it during games, uh, but I've, we filmed a game recently and I remembered it once. It's, <laughs> it's a stratagem called Knowledge of the Foe. It costs zero command points it's from the Saga of the Beast book. Use a stratagem in the fight phase when an enemy character is destroyed by an attack made by Space Wars model in your army. So any of my units killing an enemy character. Uh, and again, that whole 
killing enemy characters, having your own characters in your army, the whole kind of saga, heroes and so on, the whole theme, you're getting rewarded for that. You receive the command points. It costs zero command points, killing the character, you get one back. So there's potential of harvesting more command points uh, with that, which is very... It's going to happen a couple of times, usually in the game, you're going to kill a few, kill a few characters, and it's with any of your units. So that one's well worth uh, remembering to gain even more command points. Thankfully, a lot of the space wolves, stratagems are quite low, they're one command point and so on. Uh, and there's some key sort of space marine ones where characters get to fight again if they're slain, which is big. Um, so, but uh, we'll, we'll cover the units next. We'll bring in some of these HQ choices. So, I'm planning to do a top five Space Wars units video as well. So check that out. It should be released at the same time, if not uh, roughly the same time as this video. Just to let you know what I think are the, are the best units to take. So, Bjorn the Fell Handed, which is an amazing model. Utterly incredible. So, not this model here, but most of the models in the army. So here's Murderfang, painted up. Uh, it's the majority of the models in this army are painted up by Siege Studios on commission. About 90% of the army that you're going to see. Uh, they've done an amazing job. I said to them wanted classic sort of Space Wolves. So, the usual colour scheme for them. They wanted the urban basing. Uh, this grey basing here with the flock. I sent them a packet of the flock as they're painting the models up and they've done that exactly as well. So the link is for them in the video description below. And get in contact with Siege Studios for your own painting uh, commission work. But they've done a, a, a fantastic job. Really, really nice uh, work on uh, the models that they've done. But beyond the foul handed here. Again, beautiful model. Really, really nice. One of the sort of classic Space Wolves uh, models. And using lead or metal for ages and ages and then Games Workshop uh, did a re-sculpt of the plastic Space Wolves Dreadnought and from that kit, I think from that kit you can make any of these so the Venerable Dreadnought, Murderfang and Bjorn I, I believe they all come from the same kit, I could be wrong, I think these two are definitely part of the same kit possibly Bjorn, Bjorn might be a separate model, he could be yeah, I think those two come as a kit and that one's separate, but correct me if I'm wrong. But um, amazing job they've done on the Space Wars Dreadnought. So there's Beyond the Fell Handed. So one of the stratagems, or one of the strategies that I've used for uh, this Space Wars list in 8th edition, it's not as strong as it was, got a bit more careful with it, and that's uh, taking character models and hiding them behind screens uh, of other units, other units of infantry vehicles and so on. Uh, a little bit more tricky now in Night Edition. Uh, you've got to keep the unit nearby, and it's got to be over a certain size. Uh, there's no more putting a character right at the back of the board and it can't be shot at until you've cleared all the other closer units. You've, you've got to protect them up close. So, But still, uh, it does offer a level of protection that's very, very useful. Beyond the Fell Handed is a character, and so I can put screening units around him to protect him, and it means the opponent will not be able to shoot at him until those screens are removed or reduced enough in size. So I think it's a very very pow powerful strategy at trying to preserve and keep decent units like Bjorn alive because he is expensive in points. 155 points. You have to take the Heavy Flamer which is just underneath. That's 15 points now for Heavy Flamer on a vehicle. And then the Twin Laz Cannon. I want a bit of anti-tank. I'll stick it on this character Dreadnought. His ballistic skill is 2+. plus. He's re-rolling ones. Uh, for ninth edition now, if he moves, there's no minus to shooting, so it's two to hit, rerolling ones, however far he's moved, which is excellent. So I just want some nice, reliable last cannon firepower coming in. So uh, that is a grand total of 210 points, 210 point Dreadnought. But I think it's worth it, decent firepower, and he's amazing in close combat, quite durable as well. So there's movement eight, they're quick. That's on the Space Wars Dreadnoughts. Weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus, exceptionally reliable, strength 7. His toughness 8. <laughs> For a Dreadnought, it's incredible. Uh, 8 wounds, 5 attacks base, and then you've got to remember Space Brain is on the charge. If you get to the assault phase, it's 6 is popping extra hits. So loads of attacks for a Dreadnought, leadership 9 and 3 up save. So that's all really good. Uh, the Twin Laser Cannon, usual rules for that. The Heavy Flamer in there, and then the True Claw in close combat, plus. Uh, 5 strength, so strength 12, AP minus 4 and D6 damage, and you're rerolling failed wound rolls for this weapon as well. It's exceptionally reliable. 2's to hit in close combat, rerolling 1's, and then usually 3's to wound, if not 2's to wound, rerolling failed results. So he's really, really reliable. 
You get your bonus uh, command point for taking him. Uh, then he has a five plus feel no pain. So, you know, one third of his wounds he's going to ignore. So really, eight wounds. It's more like 12 wounds uh, if you factor that in. Uh, real hit rolls of one. And then explodes as well. But uh, I think it's a solid dreadnought. It's well worth protecting him and keeping him alive. You don't want him being sniped and picked off in the early turns of the game when your opponent's got lots of firepower. So I try and preserve and protect him for as long as possible. And he may just be moving about using his last can a little bit. Uh, but it's for the middle stage, later stage of the game. It's well worth keeping him alive. You can kick out even two last can shots. They're going to hit the target pretty much every time throughout the game. Yeah, all, all five turns. Very useful. And then in close combat, he will cut through vehicles very, very quickly indeed. So, I rate Bjorn. He is expensive, but he's, I mean, he's great to have in the, the heart of your Space Wars army. Now, there's no vehicles here. I've got a, a few Dreadnoughts, and that's it. I've, I've stayed away from Rhinos and, and Razorbacks and uh, you know, Primaris vehicles as well. Just going for loads of infantry and then these heroic Dreadnoughts in amongst them. So that's the kind of theme I'm going for. Of this space wars list. So that's beyond the fell handed, you know, and it's a real collectible unit to have in your space wars army, one of the classic models. So, it's loads and loads of HQs, skipping over so many of them. Rune Priest is out. I'm, I'm just going to let other armies be good at psychic abilities. I, I found, I, I experimented with the Rune Priest, some of the powers weren't going off, and it was just a little bit hit and miss. So he's been dropped. Uh, so instead, taken. Uh, Ulrich the Slayer, one of the best sculpts the Games Workshop have ever done. It's a beautiful model, absolutely incredible. Again, this one's been painted up by Siege Studios, but there he is. Um, so, one of the advantages of taking a good number of HQs for Night Edition is lots of models that can potentially move out and hold on to objectives whilst other units are, uh, are busy fighting away. Um, but, multiple reasons for taking Ulrich the Slayer. I want him there in the heart of the army. So surrounding and in amongst a number of other HQs is this nucleus of, of HQ options. Uh, so you can fight as he is. You know, he's got weapon skill, blizzard skill 2+, plus, strength 4, toughness 4. He's got 5 wounds, this is pretty good. He's got 4 attacks base, then plus the extras on top for charging and so on. And 3 up save. It does come with 4 plus invon save, which is very useful. Um, the Slayer's Oath. You can reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase for any space wars units within 6 inches of this model. So he's going to help help a load of other units nearby then if he kills an enemy character or monster then for the rest of the battle you can add one to any wound rolls you make in the fight phase for any space wars units within six inches of him so there's a double buff going on with him and both of them very very useful and powerful um, his leadership for units nearby nine inches again pretty good and also the, one of the main reasons is taking the healing balms at the end of your movement phase or it looks like an attempt to heal a single model. To do so, select a Space Wars Infantry, Biker or Cavalry unit within 3 inches of him. And if that unit contains a wounded model, you, you gain D3 lost wounds. He's not able to resurrect de dead models, but he's able to restore wounds. So in amongst the figure of the fighting, you're taking casualties, he's able to restore D3 wounds. Trying to keep some of those characters alive. Um, you'll see them as they come along, but they could be teetering on, on the verge of uh, being knocked out of the game. And then he's just able to knock the wounds back up and keep them in the fight. I think that's very helpful, especially with the number of HQs um, that I have in the list. So, you know, multi-options with Ulrich the Slayer. I just need to remember all his rules because he's got some real decent buffs, some really good ones. And then one of the main reasons is to restore wounds, not onto vehicles, but onto other infantry models nearby. So I think he's useful enough. So Auric is in, and again it's a celebration of, of Space Wars models, and it's one of the, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best sculpts that the Space Wars have. Then, yeah, I, I, I left him out of a few games, and I have missed Krom. He's, I've put him back into this final list, so he's over here. And again, I, the model is utterly incredible. It's, it's, it's utterly superb. One of my favourites. So really glad to have him back. Beautifully sculpted model. He's not a game winning model. But uh, again, played a game recently. Sort of paired him up with Ulrich the Slayer. And Krom was taking a lot of wounds. And Ulrich restored about 
six, not all in one turn, but over the course of a number of turns. So he kept Crom in the fight, so that, that was his job, and they were both pairing up and, and fighting away in close combat. Crom Dragon Gaze, I think it's a bit of a character killer here. His stat line's pretty good. He's not going to win you the game, but uh, his weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+. Plus. Strength 4, toughness 4, I'll come to points for these in just a moment. He's got 5 wounds, quite durable. He's got 5 attack space, and that's going to go up on the charge and so on. Um, so a really, really good stat line for what you're paying for. And then, really, it's his close combat weapon, uh, the Worm Claw, plus 2 strength, so strength 6. He's usually going to be wounding like infantry-type units on a 3+. plus. So if you minus 2, if you minus 3 in the assault phase, or the assault when the assault doctrine is active. And the damage here, this is where the character killing ability comes in, it's D3 damage on that axe. So, you know, all of a sudden you can rack up five, six wounds on a character model. Now, I think that can come as quite a surprise. Uh, enemy units within three inches of Chrome must reduce the leadership by one, it's not very significant. Uh, it does grant reroll hit rolls of one for friendly space wars units within six. So, especially now in ninth edition, you know, the, the days of the multi-cluster unit that's really tightly packed, like gun lines and so on, I, I think that's not as viable now, There's, there really is the need to spread out and, and form sort of micro armies, uh, one, two, three armies that sort of move out and, and take objectives and go after opponents' objectives and so on. And so therefore, I've got my one unit that's, that's given a reroll ones buff, you know, which way is it going to go? And it's, you're going to not be granting the buff to a load of units that are in another place on the table. So having Crom with that reroll one ability, I can send off somewhere else and he's going to give that bonus to other units, I think it's very, very useful. So. And again, it's another character that I can hide behind screens of other units. Uh, 4 plus one save as well. So I think he's durable enough. And uh, with the help of Ulrich, storing wounds. Pretty good. So, points then. And try to celebrate the whole character. So you've got some, these are all classic Space Wolf uh, characters here. Amazing sculpts, all three of these. Ah, that's, that's superb. So... Uh, Ulrich the Slayer is 100 points now, and Krom, and there's no other points to pay, and then Krom is 90 points. I think it's a bargain, 90 points uh, for him. So, moving on, it's very, very tough choices to make. There's some fantastic options to go for. Yeah, so the next one, I'm going to move on to my Warlord now. So that's the, the Wolf Lord on a Thunderwolf mount. This is a character that's not named. You can customise and create your own. So I made my own sculpt. Just some rocks from the, the, the driveway on this base. Some smashed up bits from Space Wolf kits. That comes to the Thunderwolf cavalry kits, a Thousand Suns helmet. Uh, and then a spare Thunderwolf cavalry model. We'll go on there, I created my own shield just out of some space wolves bits, stuck on some extra bits onto the backpack, extra bits onto the model here, and then that Thunder Hammer I believe comes with the Thunder Wolf Cavalry kit. So just created my own Wolf Lord on the Thunder Wolf mount. Very happy with how he's come out, and he will lead In this list, he'll lead the army. So I have got a, a, a Dreadnought, an infantry based part of the army, but also got a cavalry element as well. Uh, which again I think is going to be exceptionally useful in Ninth Edition the need to move quickly and to go after objectives and grab objectives quickly on the table um, I think cavalry are very useful indeed so this is a tough character this one here and I've got some, some multiple things stacked up to try and make him uh, as good as possible so uh, first is the speed, movement 10, it's nice and quick weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+, plus. strength 4, toughness 5 Seven wounds, loads and loads of wounds, four attack space, leadership nine and three up save. Uh, I then go for, uh, you're getting your reroll ones again. So I've got three units now granted reroll ones. Remember to talk about three parts of an army, two flanking parts and one central. Now I've got the reroll ones buff, all three parts uh, of my force. Again a four plus in one save and I take the storm shield, so bump him up to a three plus in one save which is very very useful you know you can charge into a tough target with the intention of trying to bring them down but you can also absorb and uh, deflect a lot of the damage that comes back at you if you're up against a very tough uh, and durable enemy unit so i then pay the points of thunder hammer so we're looking at uh now is 100 points the wolf lord uh 
Yeah, 100 points, then 40 points to the Thunder Hammer, and 10 points to the Storm Shield for a character. So 150 points, not astronomical in cost. So what you've got there is okay. It's all right, it's, it's pretty good, but I've, I've tried to add in some extras to make him even better. So first two, I give him a relic. Let's make sure that's right, yeah. So, I give him uh, the Wolfen's Stone. So you can make an additional attack for models in friendly space, or infantry, bike, and cavalry units, only three inches of the bearer, uh, when they make their attacks in the fight phase. So, it's not on the charge. Yeah, it's not on the charge, you always get it. So, you, know, you charge in, and then the fighting continues, and so turns after that, you're still going to get the plus one. So he benefits from his own buff, so he's going to get plus one attack. So now he goes from four attacks to five attacks. The space range on the charge, six attacks. So now you're looking at a nice healthy amount of attacks. Uh, then he's going to he's going to uh, grant that bonus to other units nearby, which is excellent. And then that's it, pretty much for the Wolf and Stone. Then I go for the Warlord trait here, Saga of the Wolfkin. So if a unit, or it's Deed of Legend, uh, so Slayer Toads for five orders in the fight phase of your Warlord. I, it's quite likely he's going to do that. He's going to smash for any type of target. And you could charge him into some light infantry and just get that tally quite quickly. Um, so first of all, uh, until, that le until that deed is fulfilled, he's just going to get the bonus. And the bonus is... If unit is affected by the saga in the fight phase, add one attacks characteristic of all models. If it made a charge move, was charged with formed heroic intervention. So it's like the Space Marine bonus, but now it's plus two instead of plus one. It's on the charge, he's on plus two attacks, or if he is charged or is heroically intervened. Or if he performs heroic intervention. So, if he fulfills the deed, then that plus one spreads out to other units within six inches. So it's a fantastic buff. I think it's quite achievable for him. He's going to cut through stuff pretty quickly. You know, the Thunder Hammer, usually it's going to be twos or threes to wound, Sigma minus three or AP minus four, guarantee three damage, and he's going to start smashing through stuff quite effectively. So I rate him. It's great fun putting together your own character as well. And just try and enhance him with uh, a relic and a warlord trait also. And, you know, he's a real buffing ability to help out other units. As well, so we've got some pretty potent HQ choices so far. Just a, a real, the real core of the army is these HQ choices. So that's those HQ choices. I'll mention a strategy from now. Call of the Wild. It's Touch of the Wild. Use the strategy in the fight phase. Select one space or character model from your army. Any of them. To the end of that phase, and resolve an attack made by that model, an unmodified hit roll of four plus scores, an auto, additional hit, an auto hit. It's unbelievable. You know, you're rolling eight attacks, and as uh, six of them are four pluses, this is an extra six auto hits. It's crazy powerful. That one there, and check out the comment section if it's been FAQ'd by, <laughs> by Games Workshop, wherever it's been left, but uh, very, very powerful. I'm not going to go through all of these. There's some the ones that give you some bonuses. The ones I often try and use and save up for uh, is your two space walls. Yeah. Seeking a saga is pretty good. Use a strategy at the beginning of your fight phase. Use a space walls character from your army. There's an inch of an enemy unit with a greater power rating. You can real foul wound rolls for attacks made by a character against the enemy unit. Very, very useful. One card point. Fantastic. Um, only in Death Duty End, that character is slain. Uh, then you can still fight with it. So he goes down close to combat. Uh, he then gets to fight before the model's removed from plate. That one is super powerful. And then this one, Honor the Chapter. Use a strategy at the end of the fight phase. Select a space was infantry bike or cavalry unit from your army. You can fight again, which is super powerful as well. So I know this sort of space, standard space marine ones, but if you get a super powerful character that's able to fight again, or if it's slain, it can fight again. It's just a case of charging them in, and then you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna cause massive trouble for the opponent. So nice solid stratagems 
to really just make these work super hard. I mean, you could charge them into two tanks and with the help of those stratagems and all the extra stuff being added on top, you'll smash his way through a couple of tanks in a turn, potentially. Even have a chance of bringing down a Bane Blade in one go. Yep. Yeah. yeah, with, with Touch of the Wild, being able to fight again, you could do it. Scary stuff. So, keep moving through. Yes, one more HQ choice, it's the Iron Priest. So again, I mean, here's the model here, one of the sculpts, now the, the, the actual model doesn't come with that. I thought you'd come with, with one of these, um, but uh, you only get this model here in the, in the blister pack. Uh, but again, one of the brand new sculpts for the Space Wolves, and beautiful model, really, really nice. And uh, nicely painted up by Siege Studios. So in he goes, that's the fifth and final HQ choice. There's another character to come, Murder Fang, but that's the HQ choices. So for, Italian, for a Battalion, it's maximum three uh, HQs, and the Patrol you can take two, so there it is, five. So the Iron Priest then, uh, he's not bad by himself. Uh, his weapon skill is actually two plus. Uh, and then uh, three attacks, which is okay. Um, so I'll put the model on here. Again, it's a beautiful model from Games Workshop, really, really nice. Fantastic sculpt. Um, so again, one of their iconic classic Space Wolves uh, sculpts. And that's, that's quite one of the more recent uh, plastic models that they've done. So I'm Priest, three attacks, which is okay. And then two plus armor though, which is not too bad. Uh, I give him the relic, the armor of Russ. So a uh, four plus in on the save. So 4 plus 7 fun save. In addition, at the start of the fight phase, choose an enemy unit within an inch of this model. That unit cannot be chosen to fight within the fight phase until all other units have been able to do so. Uh, if the target unit has an ability that allows it to fight first and so on and so on. So there's a little bit of a, a bit of help there you can offer uh, by sort of handicapping an enemy unit that's nearby. He's not too bad in close combat. The Hellfrost, Hellfrost pistol first of all, range 12, strength 8, minus 4, d3 damage. Uh, and then 6 plus, if wounds are caused, 6 plus causes... Or on a six, it suffers a mortal wound. And then the servo arm, but I think usually going to be using the Tempest Hammer. Times two strength. Uh, times two strength, yeah. And then which is strength eight, AP minus three, and th flat three damage. And then again, if a six is rolled, it's a mortal wound. That Tempest Hammer isn't too bad. And you start adding on, stacking up bonuses like charge bonuses and, and relics and mortal trait bonuses nearby, then all of a sudden that model can have a nice lot of attacks. It is minus one to hit roll, but he starts in weapon skill two plus. So two plus, minus one, and then plus one uh, to hit rolls for space wolves on the charge as well. So very reliable fitting in close combat. But the main reason for taking him is the battlesmith ability. So at the end of the movement phase, you can repair a single space wolves vehicle unit within an inch. It's D3 wounds restored. And so you're starting to get, like Dreadnought, starting to get a bit tired, they're starting to take some damage on the point of perhaps being removed from the game and then the Iron Priest can step in and, and push those wounds up over a turn or over a couple of turns and get that Dreadnought back in action and selling more chance of, of surviving uh, longer in the game which is vital and another character as well to hold on to objectives and and so on and, and maybe just to hang around with infantry squads just to give them a little bit more help in close combat against tougher targets as well so that's them that's the HQ choices there's one more character to come but those are the HQs and you're looking at uh, three HQs for your battalion two HQs for your patrol so I've got the five HQ options in and like a real good Space Wolves representation they're all about characters and heroes and sagas and and so on so I think that's a good representation of what the Space Wolves are all about so move these characters away because we're going to go on to the infantry next uh, so, two types of infantry I've gone for, Blood Claws, and then also Grey Hunters. We'll cover them all here, we'll put them out in this patch just here. So, the Grey Hunters, like so, so I'll put them there. Just put these all out. And I've got for something quite unique, I'm bearing a Terminator in each 
squads. Every squad has a Terminator model buried inside that squad and we'll talk about that tactic. It's unique for the Space Wolves. I think it's very very cool. I love the whole theme and the idea of it. I just think it's great so I'm really glad to be doing it. There's a good number of reasons why I've gone for that option but uh, we're just going to add in the blood claws. We've done the two units of Grey Hunters and then now it's these blood claw units. They're all the same size but the loadouts are slightly different for some of them. I'm just adding in the last unit just here. If you've seen these really are helping to bulk the army out now. I've got a nice lot of characters but I don't want the army to be really too thin on the ground. So I want some nice bulky units uh, to fill the army out. And that's what these infantry squads do. Um, so as, so first of all, talking about the Terminators, I used to run a squad of Terminators. This is the squad of five Terminators that was painted up. And every time I deep strike them in or move them around the table, the opponent saw them and just shot them. You know, just kill the Terminators instead of the Marines. And uh, they're starting to lose, you know, because they're well equipped, so which is a shame. So instead, what you can do with Blood Claws, and you can also do uh, with the Great Hunters as well, is you can take a Wolf Guard Terminator pack laid up. So you can add him in uh, to the squad and that terminator is then surrounded and protected by all these marines or it can work the other way around where the terminator protects the marines it's sort of your choice how you're going to do it as long as it varies if you want to take the risk and tank it on the terminator you can uh, or if you really want to keep the terminator alive because of the extra attacks and the better war gear then you can sacrifice the marines and take the hits on them and keep that terminator alive so that's the idea it looks really cool it just looks fantastic and i think it adds to the durability of these units as well to have a terminator at least one terminator inside each squad with that two plus armor save two wounds uh five plus in one save or indeed three plus in one save for this one here with the storm shield so as uh, five units first of all uh, the gray hunters two units here at the back two units of six so five regular gray hunter models it's the minimum size and then on top of that you then take the Wolfguard Terminator pack leader so in total six models in each unit they're both loaded out with plasma guns there's a plasma gun in each squad the rest are equipped with bolters and chainsaws as well which you can give them chainsaws at no cost just to get that extra attack as well uh, so they're well equipped they can fight in close combat not too bad if they need to then the Terminator in each squad this one's equipped with a storm bolter just for the extra dacker and then a parax and this one here, a power sword and a storm bolter. So, you know, small squad, but when they remain stationary, they can kick out a fair amount of firepower. And with tactical doctrine, a bit of AP minus one going on uh, with them as well. So that's the idea with them. Their job mostly is to hold ground, hold objectives. So they can camp out on objectives, especially here in ninth edition, a lot of objectives on the board. Uh, I can sit there on top of objectives and they can sit there with their firepower so they can contribute, they can do something so enemy units get too close. Range 24, they can start kicking out some firepower. Uh, their firepower's, the volume increases if they sit still. So I, I want them to be sitting on top of objectives and then they can just sit there and, and use their firepower. Or just sit there and, and, and absorb damage and the opponents got to get through the marines and the terminator uh, which isn't too easy and so I think there's nice pretty durable units holding on to objectives that's their aim if I need them to go forwards and they can they can march up with the blood claws and they're equipped with chainsaws and the, the terminator in each squad's you know got a power, power weapon of some kind so they can contribute if I need them to but usually they're going to be on some kind of objective holding uh, plan with those then three units of blood claws. They're at the very front line to push forwards and on the aggressive, steadily moving forwards. The idea of them is to shield the characters behind, so you can imagine the dreadnoughts stacked up behind them, other characters, the opponent's got to get through this screen, which is buffed uh, and protected more with the terminators buried inside the squads. The opponent's got to get through them in order to try and get through to the characters behind. So I know they're going to get shot at, um, but that's the whole point of them is to be that front line and to take the damage so again squad of five the minimum you have to take and then adding the terminator in so three squads of six of the blood claws they're not too bad regular blood claw has one attack but they've got chainsaws as an extra attack space rings on the charge another attack and they also get berserk charge on a turn in which they make a successful charge you can have one 
additional attack in the fight phase raw models in this unit so yeah there's five marines up there 20 attacks on the charge if you start getting warlord traits and relics nearby adding even more attacks all of a sudden these small little units can cause surprises for the opponent with the sheer number of attacks and it's reliable attacks you know it's twos to hit if i've got a six uh, if i've got a uh, a reroll one buff going on from one of my HQ choices nearby, then that's very, very reliable hitting potential in close combat. If we get to the assault phase, the chainsaws turn into AP minus one, and sixes pop extra hits. So, not too bad at all. Yeah. Uh, there is headstrong trying to control them when they charge, but you've got a wolf guard model. In each squad, you, know, you don't have to worry about that rule. They are fully under your control as long as that Terminator remains alive. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about those. I, I just, I love the look of it. I think they're great. A five-man squad of Marines, not much potential with them. Not that durable. Add a Terminator in, all of a sudden they look a bit more mean, and and they should perform better in the game. Now, they can operate separately. Or I can gang them up. Two units could operate together with a bit more punch. But they're able to split off and head off in different directions, which again, tactical flexibility uh, is very, very useful uh, now, especially in Ninth Edition. Because you're going to have units head needing to head off in different directions. So I need that flexibility with the smaller sized units. So Blood Claws are in. I'll cover points then. Uh, the Iron Priest, 75 points for him. 50 points base, 20 points for the Hammer. Five points for the pistol. Then uh, 116 points for these two Grey Hunter squads. 75 points for the five Marines. It's all the squads are the same. 75 points for the five Marines. All the Terminators are 23 points base cost. This one here, three points for the Storm Bolter, five points for the axe, three points for the Storm Bolter, five points for the sword. So 116 points for those two Grey Hunter squads. Uh, then the twin. Uh, lightning Claws is 10 points on this one and 23 points for the Terminator uh, same with this one, exactly the same with the Twin Lightning Claws and then here, Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield so these guys come in at 108 points, cheaper with the Lightning Claws and then 118 points with the Thunder Hammer, Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield with this guy uh, one other thing to point out with the Terminators they're actually better inside these uh, Blood Claws squads regular Terminators just our regular Terminators, but in Blood Claws, they are getting their Berserk Charge. So your Terminator's actually getting more attacks when they're part of a Blood Claws squad. So I just love the look of the whole thing, and they bulk the army out quite nicely. That's the Blood Claws then, and the Great Hunters. You need, you have to have your three troops to make up your battalion, and you have to have one more for the patrol. I've taken two, so fulfill all the slots that are required uh, for troops for those. Uh, Attachments. So we've got some decent HQs. We've bulked the army out with some infantry, which is like, the infantry is okay. Uh, and now we're looking to add in some more units to spice up this Space Wolves army. Yeah, the Venerable Dreadnought. Now this is a unit that's come in and out of my Space Wars army. It's back in again. It was out for a while, it's back in and out again, and now it's back. <laughs> so I think it's pretty good. Uh, 133 points here, which I think is not too bad. Points cost. 85 points base. There's a Storm Bolter on there, 3 points. The Blizzard Shield's 15 points. 30 points for the Great Axe. So what you're getting is movement 6, it's not as quick as the other Space Wars Dreadnoughts, it's a bit slower, but it's weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+, plus. strength 6, toughness 7, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 up save, stat line is not too bad, blizzard shield grants a 4 plus everyone save, so you've got some tank that's firing laser cannons at it, you can try and tank those uh, wounds on a 4 plus everyone save, which is great. Smoke launchers to try and protect him more, uh, there is a 6 plus feel no pain, which will help a little bit. And then the Great Axe itself, you can go for Cleave, which you get uh, plus 4 strength, so strength 12, 8 minus 3 and d6 damage. It is minus 1 to the hit rolls, so 2 to hit becomes 3 to hit. If you charge, or you are charged, you get plus 1, so it's going to cancel it out, so it's not too bad at all. Uh, and then 
if you go for scythes, if you do get stuck in against infantry, you get two attacks, uh, make two hit rolls for each attack uh, with this weapon instead of one. So four attacks, five attacks on charge, going to be ten attacks, two to hit, it's pretty, pretty good for hacking down single wound infantry. The Dreadnought's in. Um, I like having three Dreadnoughts in the army. Uh, it's another one that the Iron Priest can repair. Quite handy for sitting on top of objectives. You know, that 4 plus Invon save and the wounds and the feel no pain. It's quite hard to get rid of it. I, I certainly wouldn't place it in the middle of the table where all, the opponent can fire at it with all of his guns. We would try and obscure and hide it to limit the amount of units that can fire at it. And if wounds do come through, then the Iron Priest can try and patch it up. Handy enough for camping out on top of objectives, like on guard duty, sit there, if anyone comes too close, you can just pounce on them with the axe. So that's the idea of the venerable, the venerable dreadnought. I found, just not to throw him away too early, to deliberately put him in a position where he's going to get shot at, because the opponent will try and pick him off, and so I try and obscure him, and it seems to keep him alive for a bit longer, and then it becomes more and more useful as the game goes on. Uh, Wolfen then. So I think perhaps we'll look at Murderfang first of all, uh, here, so there's the model, it's one of the unique sculpts uh, for the Space Wolves, it's the, uh, the revamped plastic kit uh, for Space Wolves Dreadnoughts, so uh, Murderfang's one of the options, the Venerable Dreadnoughts is another option you can go for from that kit, so we'll put him in, he is a model to keep an eye on during our Space Wolves games for sure, and the damage potential from him is absolutely ridiculous. I think it's an absolute bargain as well. So Murderfang points for him. Uh, it's a named character with a fixed uh, points value, including all the war gear. 135 points. It's cheap really for what he can do uh, potentially. It's movement 8. It's one of the quicker dreadnoughts. Uh, weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, but it's that 2 plus weapon skill that's excellent. Uh, and then obviously plus 1 on the, to the hit rolls as well on the charger if he has charged. Strength 6, toughness 7, 8 wins. 5 attacks base, which is superb. Leadership 8 and the 3 plus save. Uh, so there's Stormbolt and Heavy Flame, but that's all included in the, in the cost of 135 points. Then the Murder Claws, a times 2 strength, so strength 12, AP minus 3 or AP minus 4 in the, uh, when the Assault Doctrine is active, damage flat 3, so really reliable. And to make it even better, you can reroll your failed wound roll. So usually it's going to be 2 to wound or 3 to wound. Gets yeah, the heavier targets and it's all re rollable. Fantastic. Uh, you can't be a warlord and then murder lust. You can re roll foul charge rolls, so you know, movement eight and re rolling your charges, excellent. In addition, in turning which murder fan makes a successful charge, uh, you get plus two attacks as well. So you go from five attacks to seven attacks, space rings on the charge, eight attacks. And if you're playing that touch of the wild, stratagem, any four pluses generating also extra hits, plus if he's a character and he's slain. You can get to fight before he's removed from the table. It's one of those units that you can just move in aggressively, charge it into something, and then the opponent's in big trouble once Murderfang makes contact. So I think mean, he's absolutely superb. For 135 points, I would really very strongly recommend, <laughs> recommend that you add him into your Space Wolves list. And again, you know, a real Space Wolves, a fluffy Space Wolves uh, option as well. So. I kind of see you know, Primaris coming in all over the place and, and people painting different Space Marine chapters just with Primaris and just changing the colour scheme around. Instead here I'm trying to go for real, really uh, fluffy Space Wolves units and uh, Murder Fang's definitely one of those units for sure. So then uh, Wolfen next. So we've got the theme of the infantry and, and the Dreadnoughts. Now one of the, the ace that you can keep in your back pocket here with the Wolfen. The key with these is, you know, some units I'm, I know I'm going to put on the front line. And I know they're going to get shot at. With Wolfen, you don't want to put them on the front line because your opponent will just will go after them and prioritise them. And so I try and keep the Wolfen tucked away and try and be patient with them uh, and then try and bring them out at the right time. They've got quite a good reach on them. They are movement 7. Weapon skill and ballistic skill 5 plus. They're strength 5, toughness 4. They've got 2 wounds each and they've got 5 plus feel no pain. So they're quite durable that way. But again, you want to stick about in front of your army and the opponent's able to bring lots of guns to bear against them because they won't last too long. Uh, three attack space, which is utterly superb. superb. Four plus save, uh, but I give mine uh, 
Two of the models have thunder hammers and storm shields. Two of them have the axes, the great frost axe. And then I think you have to give uh, the wolf and claws or the frost claws to the squad leader. So that's the loadout I've gone for there. Points cost for those is 210 points, 140 points base cost, frost claws, 10 points, uh, two storm shields is eight points, two found hammers, 32 points, and then 20 points for the two uh, frost axes, the great frost axe. So the movement seven, and then you get uh, bounding lope with these. Models in this unit can advance and charge in the same turn, so you've got even more uh, reach with them, nice and quick. Uh, there's the bonuses for Curse the Wolf and Kill and Hunt, and then uh, Death Frenzy here. So the 5 plus feel no pain, and then if a model is slain in the fight phase, and once the enemy unit is finished making its attacks, you can attack with that model before removing it as a casualty. So even if they're slain, uh, they'll still get to fight, even if they've already attacked that phase. So they're, they're nasty, but the key for them is they have to get in to close combat, and, and ideally without having taken any casualties. So it's a careful placement of them on the table and then bring them out at just the right point to take on just the right target and then they're utterly deadly. If, you're, if they're able to go on the loose without too much damage coming in from the opponent they can cause absolute havoc. So the Wolfen are a unit that's well worth using wisely and really thinking about where to place them during the game. The Wolfen, super strong. And for 210 points, the damage output that potentially can come from them, I think they are worth the points. But they're not if they get shot at and blown away very quickly. So wolfing it in. So now what we've got is we've got a, a, a bulky infantry base here, some characters and dreadnoughts going on. We've got the orphan that can burst out from amongst the ranks at the right point. But to speed the army up, and this is crucial for ninth edition, so many objectives to go after. And sometimes you have missions where you have to go after the opponent's objective and so on. You need something to move across the table quicker. Uh, that is Fun Thunderwolf Cavalry, and I've also got Fenrisian Wolves. I'll bring them in first of all. So, I, this is a very insignificant unit. I'm not expecting anything from these Fenrisian Wolves. So, they're in the army, but I'm, I, I, I'm placing no emphasis upon them whatsoever. Just five Wolves, 35 points for them. As a few uses for them. You can shield characters with them, although that shield won't last too long, they've only got a 6 plus save. Um, in close combat they're okay, but they're not really going to do too much damage. Uh, as one good use for them is uh, they can re-roll their charges. Foul charge rolls, which is useful. You can use them to tap out tanks. Works a bit different now in Night Edition, but can still be pretty effective. Uh, you charge into the vehicle, if the opponent pulls back, uh, even a flyer or a skimmer, uh, they uh, can't shoot. Uh, if they stay in combat, their shots have to go against uh, the unit that's charged into them. So uh, that can, that, you know, the wolves, the Fenrisian wolves, is a throwaway unit. So the opponent's wasting their firepower on them as opposed to shooting at something else, like the wolfen, for example, that are moving up the table. So they're useful in that regard. Also, potentially, smite absorbers as well. You can stick them right at the very front of your army uh, to absorb some smite and protect the other models that you have. So there, it's a useful unit. And that's pretty much it, but sad. And also narrative-wise and fluff-wise, they look fantastic. And so, uh, to keep the theme going, very sh I lo love the idea of adding those in. Uh, you know, because for 35 points I could have got, what, two more Blood Claw models? I just like having the wolves in, I think, just to uh, mix things up. And uh, useful enough, nice and quick, 10-inch uh, move. Alright, so next we'll take a look at uh, the last couple of units here as we go into fast attack. So we, we've got our uh, Tregnaughts, infantry, as uh, the uh, Wolfen that can burst out from the ranks. But to try and speed the army, or add a bit of speed into the army, uh, I take cavalry units here. So Thunderwolf cavalry, uh, and then also Fenrisian walls, which we'll look at first of all. Very insignificant unit. Don't expect anything from them in the game. But they have their uses. I guess from a narrative point of view, uh, trying to add them into the army, space wolves, and the whole wolf theme going on. It's great to see these things running around the table. They're nice and quick. Don't expect them to do too much damage in close combat. Uh, the uses for them then, uh, I could charge them into 
say, a vehicle and try and disrupt the vehicle. You charge them into infantry, they may get cut down a bit quick. So things like vehicles are great, which have a low amount of attacks. More likely these are going to survive. The morale is terrible anyway. Um, leadership 4. <laughs> so they won't hang around if they start taking heavy casualties. Um, so vehicles are ideal. You charge into the vehicle. A little bit different to what 8th edition was, but if you're charging against the vehicle, the opponent can pull back with the vehicle. Uh, that's even vehicles that can fly. Uh, in which case that vehicle can't shoot, which is great. Uh, or if the vehicle elects to stay in, then they have to fire against the the walls until they're destroyed, and that disrupts their firepower. It, it takes away the firepower from uh, against Marvel units moving up. So useful in that regard. Uh, potential bit of bodyguard duty as well, acting as a shield, uh, but not that effective because they're not very durable. Uh, and then finally. Another use for them is I could swing around and grab objectives, but be a little bit careful because they're, again, not very survivable. But the other option is to absorb smite. So I could put them at the front of the army, right at the very front, and they'll take the initial smites coming through instead of any of these other units. So that's a potential use for them as well. 35 points for them. Right, then lastly is the Fundorf Cavalry. Maybe just put them on this page here. So... Thunderwolf Cavalry have been the mainstay of many Space Wolf armies over the different editions. Remember back in 7th edition they were utterly deadly. They were one of the, the most powerful units that you could take uh, with that real sort of anti-tank loadouts, bristling with thunder hammers and so on, and the rules for them, they were just terrifying. They were superb. Um, for, th for the way I run them, I'd, I've hidden my anti-tank ability within my character units and so on, and with the Wolfen. And so I've taken the anti-tank potential away from these uh, as playing into the fact that they are a massive bullet magnet. There's a massive sort of psychological thing with these, often finding games the opponent shoots at the Thunderwolf Cavalry, even though they're not really the most uh, damage potential unit that I have. There's not much damage is gonna come from these, and they're really not much of a threat to vehicles at all, apart from disrupting them in close combat. But other than that, still find the opponent often firing their heavier guns but trying to remove the Thunderwolf cavalry and so I've played into that I've, I've deliberately given them the mineral loadout but I have given them storm shields I know the firepower is going to come and often it's heavy guns so I give them three plus invon save across the board on these two units two units of three and they move up quickly often up the table they distract the opponent they, they pose what the opponent sees as a threat and then they shoot at these instead of shooting at the rest of my army so also speed, so 9th edition is great, but you need to be able to hold objectives now for 9th edition. Uh, and so a quicker element to the army is very, very useful. Points then, I usually I'll take a power axe on the squad leader, but points wise I just can't squeeze it in. So instead they're all taking chain swords, 147 points a squad, including a storm shield for each squad member. Uh, so as they're great. Uh, company to mix in with him so they'll add a bit of protection to him as he moves up so you can bury him in amongst uh, the squads and really he's the anti-tank guy and they will shield him as they move up so that's the kind of idea so keeping my anti-tank ability hidden away as much as possible and the opponents to chew through this kind of stuff to get through to him the toughest five three wounds each so you know it's good durability there three plus armor save and three plus invon save for these also Against lightly armoured units, they're not too bad at all. Two attacks each. Squad leader's got three. Chain swords gives them an extra attack across the board. Space Marines on the charge, an extra attack. If there's relics and warlord traits given bonuses, then there's potential of extra attacks there as well. In the assault phase, or in the uh, assault doctrine, sixes are popping your auto hits. Uh, your chain swords turn into AP minus one. And then also your crushing teeth and claws attacks. Uh, strength 5, AP minus 1 become strength 5, AP minus 2 uh, whilst this uh, Assault Doctrine is active and then uh, it's 3 additional attacks another 9 attacks for the squad uh, with the crushing teeth and claws as well so against lightly armoured infantry you get a ton of attacks with them and so they'll be uh, effective much more effective against them. Not going to cause much damage against heavy infantry and vehicles, um, but uh, they're there as the 
a big psychological distraction for the opponent to try and deal with. And usually it works. It means if the opponent's firing at them and two thirds of the heavy guns are being deflected off of these shields, then those shots are not coming in against my other units. And so that's the point of them, is to deliberately be a bullet magnet and I've equipped them so that I've not spent too much on more gear so that when they are destroyed it's not too much of a loss but I've, I've maxed out and trying to protect them to keep them alive for as long as possible that's the Thunderwolf Cavalry what we'll do now that's the whole list I'll zoom out and then we'll take a look at the in entire army give you an idea of the footprint of how the force looks and how the whole thing is pulled together alright so that's the Space Swords list uh, so I, I, th I think a real good narrative spread here of Space Wars units kept at classic Space Marines. Uh, so you've got your infantry squads here designed to absorb and take damage. So the bullet magnets and to, to bulk out the army here, this, this steadily advancing blocks of infantry. But small units are able to adapt to move around uh, in different places and then burying the Terminator inside each squad. So that real unique ability that you can do for Space Wars. Uh, then there is that cavalry element here, so the Thunderwolf cavalry. The wolves as well, just that real sort of narrative theme running through of them, and then a wolf lord uh, to lead them, to lead that cavalry charge as well. And then he's carrying some buffs and bonuses to really enhance these units just here. Uh, then the wolfen, that's the, the ace in the back of your pocket there to, to pull out and use those against anything, just to throw them in against the target once they reach that target. And the idea is to keep them alive and at full strength, and then send them in at the right point, and they'll cause absolute havoc. So. Very, very useful unit for sure. Uh, then some helping HQ choices. So Krom, decent against characters. The Iron Priest to restore wounds on the Dregnaughts. And he's not too bad himself uh, for fighting. And then also uh, Ulrich Slayer to restore wounds onto infantry and cavalry and so on. To try and keep them in the fight for as long as possible. So to help out units like the, the Wolf Lord uh, here. Um, I just going through the list, I didn't take a second Warlord trait, so there's only one Warlord trait been taken, so I've actually been able to restore a command point to this list. So there's actually 10 command points in total, and then plus the 5 that you get throughout the game. So very, very healthy uh, the amount of points available for spending on stratagems. I don't think I mentioned, if I haven't mentioned already, uh, there is the relic for him, which is the Armour of Rust. So 4 plus in one save, just to try and make the Iron Priest that much more uh, durable and then of course the dreadnoughts so that's the theme stayed away from regular tanks and vehicles and gone for uh, space wolves specific space wolves themed dreadnoughts murder fang uh, the venerable dreadnought and then beyond the fell handed as well murder fang utterly deadly once he gets into close combat against heavier targets uh, and then uh, the dreadnought more durable and can take a lot of, a lot of damage and then uh, beyond the fell handed decent reliable firepower from him uh, and then also nasty in close combat as well. So that's the Space Swords list. Do you think this list is strong? How well do you think it's going to do? It's performed well in 8th edition and it's come as quite as a surprise. It's great to see the Space Swords doing well and getting involved in lots of games. Um, we'll see how well they do for the rest of the season. Uh, which units would you add in? What units would you take out? Would you add in some Primaris, if so which units would you remove, what Primaris would you add in, would you keep it classic Space Marine, uh, check out the comment section below, see what other uh, Space Wolves players are saying, especially those that are experienced and have played lots of games with Space Wolves and you can see what others uh, have to say, and then uh, there's a link in the video description below for Siege Studios, they've done an amazing job you know, most of these, all these units around here all Siege Studios work um, so by all means get in contact with them for your own painting commission work. But that's the video. Keep a look out for more uh, complete army videos on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.